Oh, you my camera. I am a little too close. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> That was a little too much space. Happy, happy Monday. Happy Although I think Monday. I actually have to turn up the volume. Excuse me for a second. I can't. Hold turn. on. We're still adjusting. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's Monday. <laughs> there we go. That's a little bit. Oh my gosh. I was like, okay, no, I'm not. Wait. Oh gosh. <laughs> Try to have issues. Isn't this fun? The two people that are watching, it's probably just us two. Okay, but I know. it's too high. Okay. <laughs> There's a couple people who sign on and like sign right off. They're like, these two are like a hot mess. So like, they can't even get their camera right. Okay, that's that's good. All right. Um, cheers, girl. Hello. Woo As it should be. Oh my yeah. Gosh. It's Monday. <laughs> it is Monday. Um, I'm super excited to talk about love bombing. For people who are watching right now, who have been love bombed, this is for you. If you don't know what love bombing is, mm -hmm. this is for you too. Um, we've both been through it, maybe more than once. I'm going to find out as you find out. And uh, we're going to talk about the stages of it, how it happens, what to look for. Hey, guys. Um, but it's a real thing, and it's really happening, and no one is immune to it. <laughs> you can yeah. just come out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, you know what I was, like, before we hopped on, I was just doing some kind of, like, background research, and <laughs> because we're nerds. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. But what we're was pretty, fast, but we're nerds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was so fascinating to me was that this is a tactic that was coined by a cult back in the 70s. It was the, the oh. what, what was called the Moonies, which was the Unification oh, the Church. Yeah. Yes. This was their leader coined love bombing as a term in order to pull people in. Like this was the method. And then it became a thing and other cults had used it. It was really popular in the eighties and Jim Jones was using it. Mm -hmm. And it's like a popular method that pimps use. Like this is a real thing that, that people use to groom um, yes. certain behaviors. Yes. And they look for specific kinds of people, namely empathetic, nice, yep. compassionate, people who are like, oh, let me help you. Yeah. Um, so let's start. I, that, I think that's fascinating. I am so interested by cults. I, mean, <laughs> I know, me too. In college, <laughs> I think I it had a, a public speaking class, and that was what I did it on. Cults. Awesome. I, I would have enjoyed watching that. I really would have. I'm twisted like that. <laughs> no, I, my, one of my girlfriends and I are like, have you found any new cult documentaries that we haven't seen yet? Just always keeping each other up to date. Um, I'm really fascinated by it. But um, so let's just start with what the definition of love bombing is. Um, it is really what you think it is. Love bombing is someone is coming at you with tons of love and tons of attention and affection and words of affirmation and sex and like everything. They're just like, here's everything and you feel like a celebrity you yeah. feel like you have won the jackpot that all of those romantic movies that you've ever watched has actually come true to you yes. and that is the scariest part because i'm not saying that that stuff can't be real it can be but it's the time frame which we'll get into of what <laughs> makes love bombing what it is and what makes real love and affection and all of that good stuff what it is as well so um, let's start with, do you want to share an experience with you that you've had? Well, I will. I will. But before okay. we get there, I think that just to, to add on to what you were saying, because the the science behind it is super interesting. Yes. And there is a, um, a neuroscientist at Harvard, Dr. Hans Brader, who actually said that some people are born with vulnerable dopamine systems that make them that much more perceptible to being love bombed so that's like that awful. that is me like that that's <laughs> huge because that means like there it's what i'm taking from that is just there's some people who are so vulnerable to this more than other people um but and i think that that's what you're saying is it's it's almost like if you're super empathetic and super compassionate and you want to help and you want to fix and you know those are the people who are are kind of drawn to the personality of that that person who's love bombing and then what also mm -hmm. is super interesting to me is that this is a common behavior 
of our narcissistic personality, like a true oh, yeah. one. You know, people mm-hmm. throw that word around a lot, but I'm talking about like a true diagnosed and like clinical narcissist. Um, yeah. This is one of the tactics that they use. Right. Um, it's so it's interesting. Um, I, I've done a lot of, a lot of work into this <laughs> and cause I've dealt with that before and um, it, it is true. And I think the word narcissism does get thrown around a lot and it can be confusing. Um, everybody's like, my ex was a narcissist and it's yeah. like, Okay, well, maybe he had narcissistic traits, yeah. which is very common. Um, but to be like a full-blown narcissist is, I don't want to say it's rare, but I think it's a little bit more, a little bit more rare than just, you know, a guy who's really got a gigantic ego and very loyalty <laughs> for other people. Um, so, yeah, so, well, I'll just, I'll just start with my, my experience, um, First of all, too, I had never been really love bombed in a traditional sense. I'm sure I had had, you know, guys who were super affectionate and whatnot, but I had never really been love bombed. Um, and so what was different was that this was a really handsome guy. He was really, you know, had a good job and like the whole situation, like all good on paper, right? And I just didn't feel like a connection with him. I just thought, gosh, he's so nice, but like for somebody else you know Mm -hmm. and that was it and we went on a few dates and then that was it and he and I I do mean this like he actually became slightly obsessed with me behind my back I did not know this was happening um his roommate later told me and like a few months later came back and was like hey let's be friends like let's go to lunch and I was like okay and then like the love bombing started and it was very sort of kind of subtle at first and it was just also it's really important to remember that you just might be in a place where you're more susceptible to it and more vulnerable to it and I was I was in a place where I was like gosh I haven't had a serious relationship in a long time this guy is really what I've said I've been looking for let me give this a shot even though my gut and everything else was like eh hmm Eh, like couldn't connect with him but thought okay okay and so the more the love bombing happened with all of the like you know nice states and thoughtful gestures and flowers I mean it got creepy (laughs) really fast I just thought you know I haven't had this in such a long time if ever really so maybe it's my fault like maybe it's my stuff I need to get over my fear and that was not what it was that was not the right idea and so it just opened the door to this narcissistic traded person or perhaps narcissist to come in and start doing what they do yeah and so like one of the common things is i mean if you picture a roller coaster and then that's exactly the picture the diagram of what this relationship is is you're going up and you know you are just going up and you're getting the compliments and the person's telling you that they're you're their soulmate Mm -hmm. and that there's no one more beautiful and you're getting lavish gifts and you know it just goes on and on and it is almost an obsessive um nature but you're getting all of this attention and it feels good in the moment and then you kind of get to the top and that's where they drop the bomb Mm -hmm. and then something else happens and they start to devalue you. Um, The devaluing is where, you know, is where the pain, the damage and all of like the really hard stuff comes because you just spent all of this time being put on a pedestal Mm -hmm. and now you just got knocked off. So can, can you share a little bit about like that experience? Yeah. I mean, to be honest, it was so confusing yeah. um, as they make it that way. Because yeah. I think they have much fair, a, a very different game plan going on in their head than we do. Um, we're just, like, used to kind of a normal relationship where, you know, it's moving at a pace. And for me, I just kept thinking, gosh, this is moving way too fast. Like, way too fast. And, again, I kept making excuses like, well, my dad and my stepmom and I'm not kidding. They've been married for almost 30 years. They got married after three weeks of knowing each other. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's the exception to the rule. But I thought, oh, you know, maybe this is kind of one of those situations. It wasn't. It wasn't. Because um, <laughs> you're, like, really in love with that person. And, like, you 
you do know. And I was like, I don't think so. But um, when the devaluating started happening, it was, ooh, gosh, without like going into too much detail, um, it was something, it was a part of his lifestyle that I had a very hard time accepting. I think that's a nice vague way of putting it. Um, <laughs> and it was very important to him and it was very off-putting to me also being very nice. Um, I had very strong opinions about this and I was trying very hard to understand, but like everything in me was like, no, 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 no. Like, do not want to spend my life with this person with that situation. Um, so he started making me feel that I was wrong to, yeah. to not accept this part of him. And I was like, you know, I'm not the only one. There's like millions of people who don't accept this either. And it was, uh, it was very touchy because uh, I'll just say it was a religious thing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a very open person, but this was just, there were things that I was like, you know what? I can't, I can't do this. And he just kept, he would go back and forth between like making me feel really guilty and really bad about myself to being like, but you're my soulmate and yeah. I'm going to marry you. And like, we've already started like planning, kind of getting married and like, let's go ring shopping and just getting me exhausted and like really just torn down from all of it where I'm like, okay, maybe this is the right thing. Maybe like, I just don't know what real love is. You know, I really just yeah. went against everything I knew to be true to just make it work. And that's the really exhausting part about being in the empath situation is that you are trying to make it work yeah. so badly because you think it's like, oh gosh, I'm not accommodating enough. I'm not tolerant enough. But you're really aware of your boundaries and you're setting them and they are not listening. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, and they make you feel if they just spent all of this time, these weeks and months building you up, then they're now going to tear you down and mm -hmm. you're imperfect and you're not good enough. And, you know, so in my, this relationship that I was in like that, um, I had a similar situation where you have that build up, and I'll never forget the comment that, um, that the person I was with had made and I had like come back from the gym and he had said, I don't know why. Now don't forget, like I was the most beautiful woman in the world. And then the right. comment was, I don't know why you bother going to the gym. Like you're never going to look any different than that. I mean, that's like, like a statement like that. I know. And so, so right. And so then you start to feel like what they do is they go right to your self-confidence mm -hmm. and they start to make you feel like you're crazy. Oh. And it's, it's not them, it's you. And yeah. so what you do is when you're really in this, because usually by the point you, by the time you get to the devaluing, mm -hmm. you are in this because they have swept you off of your feet and you're like, wow, I met someone who really like makes me feel special. Mm -hmm. And now they're doing the complete opposite. And you start to think you're going a little crazy. Right. Absolutely. I felt my thing that I kept saying was like, I feel like I'm in the twilight zone where everything yeah. is up is down and it's opposite day every day. And it, it was so jarring. I mean, I looked, I remember looking at pictures of myself when it was really bad and thinking, I don't even look like me. Like yeah. I, my face didn't even look like me anymore. It was really creepy. Um, but yeah, the devaluing is, they're just, um, they're just kind of bored, you know, yeah. they want, in the, in the first stage, they really just give you all of this attention because they want fuel, you know, they want that empath fuel that they don't really possess typically. Right. Um, and maybe it's different levels of empathy that they possess, you know, maybe they just don't have a lot for humans, but maybe they love dogs and cats, which is also a strange phenomenon that I've read about narcissists. <laughs> um, they can be great with animals, but not so much with people. Um, and so you're giving them all of these emotions that they don't normally feel. And so one day it just, yeah, it's like you're at the top of the roller coaster and they're like, I don't feel anymore. I need something new. You know, yeah. I need a new emotional hit. And that's when they start yep. evaluating you and you're just like confused and it's the drama. I mean, they're really surviving on drama. Yeah. And, um, and then, and then they discard you. Because and then that's the last thing they discard. 
Right. They build you up, they de devalue and discard. And if you're in, if you're not married, then discarding means maybe just walking away from the relationship and it leaves you kind of holding like the, the bag saying, what the heck just happened to me? Yeah. But if you're married, then that might look like they go and they cheat on you. And um, that that's common with a narcissistic personality. That's common in um, in a situation like this is infidelity is because they need that, like you said it perfectly, that emotional hit. They need to, to go through that cycle all again and you've just bored them. Exactly. I mean, if, to make it very simple, even if they're, I mean, they're most likely a narcissist, but even if they aren't clinically said to be a narcissist, they're just an addict. Yeah. <laughs> they're sex and love addicts. It's pretty simple. And they're an addict for drama, like a real drama queen or yeah. something. Um, and it's just, it's difficult to, you know, especially, so in my case, I was never, I was very lucky. I was never really in love with him because I was, I didn't really like him ever. Um, I just kept getting this information and this pressure of like, well, you're the right age and everyone's getting married and he wants to marry you and you've been ring shopping, but you live together. Like, all of the stuff just was pointing right. towards this. So I kept thinking, okay, yeah, okay. And all I could imagine was like us getting married and then getting divorced like less than a year later. Like yeah. I knew we would be. And I'm like, what's the point? Well, that was I my second marriage. It <laughs> lasted a year. That's exactly it. I mean, you yeah. can't. And, and that's, you know, and I think that that's a good point is like you have it. If you don't remove yourself from that relationship, you will forever live on that roller coaster or on that hamster wheel. And yeah. so, like, do you have tips on how to extract yourself from that? Because it's an emotionally abusive relationship. Like, yes. it, it, is, it is that level. And so it's yeah. not as simple as just packing up and walking out. It, it's, you know, right. by the time you get to that point where you're like, should I leave? Like, you have been through a lot and your confidence yeah. and there's all kinds of factors so like how do you how'd you walk away it took so many different times um yeah. i thought it was interesting he lived with me <laughs> um because i have an amazing apartment um <laughs> <laughs> i do i will buy this place one day um he lived with me and i kept breaking up with him like throughout the entire relationship i was like get out I don't want to be with you. You don't want to be with, I remember saying this to him a lot. I was like, you don't even like me. And he's like, that's not true. I'm like, no, but it is true. Cause you don't like anything about me. Why are you still here? Why don't you just go? Like, it was so confusing why he was staying. And I'm like, well, you're probably staying cause the rent was cheap. And I was like, <laughs> three, like I was just here, you know, like you just take advantage. Yeah. Um, but there were, I mean, there were a couple of like major breakups where finally he did move out and then we did kind of get back together mainly because I had been so manipulated at that point. I was like, oh my God, maybe I will be alone forever. Maybe this is my chance. Like I'm going to miss being married or have kids. Like I was really hung up on, will I never have children? This is awful. So I like let him back in and then, oh, I love our breakup. Can I, t can I say our breakup? Of course you can. <laughs> <laughs> no. oh my god we went on this awful vacation it was like just it was just oh I'm sure there's a saying for it but it was just this terrible vacation it rained every single day we absolutely hated each other so much had come out into the open he was basically like seeing other people like dating other people and I I just found out I was like wait what it was bad and I'm like great so we uh we get home and it was actually the following weekend. He came over and I was really hung over from the night before because I was just depressed. I was like yeah. out drinking because I'm like, I don't know how to get him away. Like every time I tell him to go, he won't leave. He never leaves my life. Like he wouldn't go away. You're stuck. I was stuck and I was stuck in my own head for a long time thinking, I don't know if I want him to go, but I can't stand him and I do want him to go. But then finally, like, every time I would, like, break up with him, he literally physically wouldn't go. So he comes over. I'm hungover. We know what that feels like, right? You're just, you're no filter. You have no filter. And he just did something so arrogant and narcissistic. It was just so 
petty and simple, really simple. It wasn't even a grand gesture of anything. It was just like, God, you're just such an awful person. And I was like, just go. Like, you're such a, oh, this is what is it? I was like, you're such a jerk. And he's like, what? I'm like, why? Why are you here? Just go. And he's like, well, I don't want to be with you either. I'm like, great. Then go away forever. Please leave my life. Yeah. And it was just, He's, by the way, he stayed for like another two hours after that, like trying to convince me otherwise, like, no, we're not really breaking up. We're just going to take a break or whatever. I'm like, no, this is goodbye forever. And then actually the rage comes in, which that comes. That's mm -hmm. fun. That came about two or three months later when he realized it was actually over and it was very scary and very ugly. But the, the getting away is such a process because it's not just them. Yeah. It's, it's really your own head and they have made you believe that you are not capable of making decisions, that you can't make it without them, that you don't really have a future unless they're there to like take care of you. They make you feel helpless and yeah. I'm the most unhelpless person I've ever met. <laughs> like, I don't know what I'm going to do without him. Oh gosh. So it's about, it's about just finding that self-worth. And the best thing that happened was that Every time something bad would happen or I would break up with him again or he would just be an awful human being, it was making me stronger instead of weaker. I was just getting stronger and stronger. And that's why I was so confused every time I would break up with him. I'm like, I can't stand you. Why won't you go? Anyway. I mean, so that, but that was what I was going to ask you next is from that experience, um, is it something you regretted and is it something that you... <laughs> Tough. Because I know like in my own experience, like I said, I had absolutely no regrets. Um, and it was such a learning experience as to like my non-negotiables and, you know, showing up again into a new relationship in worth and, and, and also being able to trust like my gut instinct, you know, and it was because I, it was like, you talked about it too. You have the gut instinct, you ignored it. Well, how silly is that? I mean, we'll never do that again, never. you know? And it really was an exercise in like really understanding that your gut instinct is always right. It's always right. Absolutely. And um, I actually forgot your question. What did, what did you ask? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> what was my question? Oh, if you, whether, you know, if it was something that you regretted or oh. did you learn from it. Um, for a long time, I did regret it. I felt like I had wasted mm. a lot of time in my prime years of my 30s. To my, in that moment, I felt like they were my prime years. Um, <laughs> but truthfully, um, that was the perfect sort of, it felt like, um, I don't know what kind of analogy this is, but like, maybe it's like, if you're rubbing two rocks together, they're just going to get smoother instead of rougher. And I kind of felt like that was happening to my limits and my boundaries and like what I would accept and what I wouldn't accept. And I just got very clear on who I was, what I wanted and what I had to give. And it was very, very clear. Um, and ever since then, it's fascinating because a, I haven't been hurt, which is lovely. Um, but B, like, I see things so quickly that it's like, oh, cool. Nope. Thank yeah. you. Bye. And it's yep. so fast. So that's wonderful. And I, I feel like I came out of that with so much because I wasn't, like, sad. I was just really angry at myself, really angry at him. But I came out with so much self-love, and that just continued to grow, and the self-worth yeah. continued to grow. And it's just weird. Sometimes I think, like, did that ever happen? Did that person ever exist in my life? Because thank God he's gone, and I hope he never comes back, like, yeah. ever. <laughs> Please. But it, it's just almost like it was like a bad dream. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's such a real thing, and I think that the, the – What's important is to recognize it and be aware of what the signs are. This goes beyond just a regular courtship. It goes beyond yeah. just like the flutters and the fun of initially dating and, and feeling all of that fun stuff at the beginning. Like this takes it to another level. And mm -hmm. so it also, it, it happens quickly. Like the, the cycle usually goes really fast and someone who's doing this, 
they're not going to do this for six months. Like this is going yeah. to be like a one month, two month, like this is going yeah. to be a quick, but at that point you're already brought into kind of their web. So be mindful that when this happens, um, recognize what's happening and understanding that it is, does not fix itself. Um, marrying them doesn't make it go away. You know, uh, going to counseling doesn't make it go away. Um, you know, this is something, a, a, a hamster wheel that you will be on forever until you force the wheel to stop and you get off. I was just going to um, point that out, that that's exactly what it is. It's not just a, here's the love bombing, here's the devaluating, here's the discarding, then it's over. It just starts over yes. again. So it goes they've devalued you, now they've discarded you. And discarding in a relationship doesn't mean they've left you. It means right. maybe they're giving you the silent treatment. Maybe they're withholding right. sex. Maybe they're yes. just totally distancing themselves and making them unavailable to you. You can't even like discuss what's going on in your relationship because mm -hmm. they're just not even there to have it. Um, and then something will change. Maybe they get bored, who knows? And then the love bombing starts again. And it's just this cycle of drama. And that's you know what's, what's so sad to me is um, last year before the pandemic started, I spoke at a high school and um, it was an inner city school. And I did a talk on relationships and healthy teenage relationships. And so much, so many of these teens were explaining this cycle that they were in with their boyfriends and how this was exactly what they were going through and it was normal for them because it was all that they knew which is so heartbreaking because it was okay but he loves me because he's telling me he loves me he tells me i'm beautiful and look at this you know beautiful necklace he got me and then in the next breath it's you know it's all of the devaluing and then they start lifting them up again and so this is something that it, it, it can affect teenagers adults um, I mean, my own experience, like, yeah, I, I was the same way. I'm like, I'm independent. I'm a business owner. I'm a lawyer. I'm all of these things. Like I have my shit together. <laughs> and yet I was pulled into that too. So it, it's, you know, it could be anyone. It, it could, it, it, there isn't a stereotype. There isn't like, and so it's just, um, I think awareness is, mm -hmm. you know, is really just the message in all of this. It is. Um, what was your experience, if, if you don't mind talking about it? Yeah, so it was, um, it was my second marriage. Um, it was the relationship. It was in, I was in and out really fast, and I am fortunate and lucky enough that I was able to recognize what was happening and say, I'm not doing this. Yeah. Um, you know, that's another whole conversation because you're twice married getting divorced again. And that's the conversation about shame and all of that that goes along with it. But aside from that, I knew like I, I would deal with all of those feelings because I couldn't stay with this person. And, you know, it was, it was all of that. It was just this hamster wheel to the point of um, even offering things like, well, let's fix this. Let's, you know, let's have a child to fix this. Oh, right. And, you know, like, but someone might say, okay, that's what I wanted. Like, I want a child. Okay, let's do that. And now you're forever tied to them. Oh. Um, you know, there were so many moments, so many, and I have the same one as you as I was on, I was in Paris. And for me, that was when I knew it was over. I'm like, this, this city was absolutely amazing and here I am with someone who it was you know I did not want to be there with and yeah. things that were said and you know I, I won't even go down that road but um fortunately I was able to reclaim Paris with my current husband and so we did Paris right but you know it, it's and I think the point is that you you get out as soon as you know and as soon as you feel all of this and like you're gonna know that something is not right you'll know this is not a healthy relationship and it's toxic and get the support you need from friends from family from therapy from counseling like whatever you have to do to remove yourself from that situation um because it doesn't get better and you're worth so much more than what you are getting in that in that moment um, absolutely agreed. I'm just remembering, um, there were some pictures from a New Year's Eve party that I threw with my ex and, um, we were very good at taking pictures. Like we looked so beautiful together and so <laughs> perfect. And, um, I remember looking through like the pictures 
and there was like us like all posed and then the next one was we were next to each other still in the same pose without facial expressions looking in opposite directions mm-hmm. and that was what it really was like that yeah. was the real relationship yeah. and it's such an interesting picture i think i may have deleted it but it's burned in my brain my memory <laughs> forever um but it was just you know the other thing too just to add it's like get out as soon as you can don't don't discard those feelings of this doesn't feel right. Um, this is happening too quickly. Maybe I should reconsider. Yeah. Just please don't do that. Even if they're just a nice guy and you're still like, well, oh, they're such a nice guy. Like mm-hmm. maybe I should give them a shot. Even if they're not a narcissist, like don't waste their time. But for the narcissist, um, I mean, they will do anything to keep you. Anything, yeah. any romantic gesture, anything. And it is really hard to maybe have never had that before to that level and think, right. how can I give this up? Please don't yeah. fall for the bait because it's bait. Yeah. So that's that's a topic for another live is, is how do you listen to your gut instinct or inner voice? Yes. That's a big one. That's a huge one. Um, yeah. Oh, did I lose you? There you are. But I don't know. I don't hear you. Pause the video. Um, so let's just leave with talking about the mastermind for. Oh yes, let's do it. Um, <laughs> why don't you start? All right. So Jackie and I are putting together a mastermind uh, called the Elevate Mastermind. It is a six-week program where we're pulling together eight women um, to join us in a journey for the for six weeks to really dive into everything needed to elevate and really step into your best version of yourself and step into the rest of 2021 from a place of power. And we are tackling boundaries and goal setting and money and uh, Um, what else are we tackling? Settling settling for more, lasting our goals. Um, Yeah, no, it's going to be an incredible six weeks of just really digging into what's keeping you back from living your best life and then doing it all together. Yep. And so then on top of that, there's some one-on-one coaching. Um, There's a private Facebook group where you you continue to get weekly support. So if this piques anyone's interest, send either of us a direct message and we'll give you more information. Um, Applications are closing soon. So um, don't, don't wait. Don't wait. (laughs) Uh, Well, I'm so glad that we got to get into love bombing and yes, there's so much more to the whole narcissistic episode yes. <laughs> um, that we'll touch on at another time. But yeah, I think we should cover um, listening to your gut and what that really looks like. Maybe next yep. next life. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Awesome. All That's right. Great kick off the week. Woohoo. Motivational Monday. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'll see you later, hon. Cheers. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.